This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In today's video, I am going to share with you some of the absolute worst photography video purchases that I've made in the past couple of years. It's a little embarrassing because there's some that just like, I can't believe I just, I did that. Like throwing money down the drain. This one is tops the chart here, guys. This is the Tilta POV helmet. It's the Hermit POV helmet. Context. I purchased this because I wanted to create high quality POV videos in the studio. So I do a lot of GoPro POV videos outdoors, which is fine, but the GoPro in the studio, it's not really great quality. So my idea was, hmm, how could I separate myself from the pack? I'm gonna put an A7S III, attach it to here, and I'm gonna do some high quality POV stuff in the studio. That was my intention. I $1,500 for that, okay? Just to try to set myself apart. In the promo video, the guy had a cinema camera, a whole like red, uh, red Komodo here with an entire V-mount battery here to like counterbalance it. Like that dude is definitely gonna have some long-term damage to that neck because the weight of just an A7S III on here with a 14 1.8, it already compresses my neck. I feel like it, there's, some, there's gonna be an issue going on here, okay? Uh, on top of that, you can't communicate with people outside of the helmet. This is like complete, this thing here, there's, you can't communicate, it, you can't hear nothing. And on top of that, it takes away your peripherals. So like I'm tripping over light stands and I'm, I'm walking like, a, like, like Batman, the first Batman, Michael Keaton, where he can't turn his neck, walking around like this, tripping on things. I can't change my settings because the camera's up to my face. What was I thinking? Terrible idea, a waste of $1,500 right there. That's for sure. Coming in at number two, is this. So Caleb Pike, he is also known as the DSLR video shooter on YouTube. He does a lot of cinema build videos. It's almost, for me, when I watch his videos, it's like an arts and crafts project, you know, because he makes it look so fun to, to build these things that I, I don't even have any use for it. Knowing that I'm not a cinematographer, knowing that I'm usually in front of the camera, not behind the camera, I went out and spent almost $2,000 building the same rig as Caleb Pike showed in his video. I used all his affiliate links, of course, and not all the pieces. I had to like Frankenstein this thing. I put a lot, it, it caused a lot of stress in my life to build this rig that I haven't even used once. And not all the pieces are here. I got the, the bad, oh my God. That was a waste of $2,000 right there. Coming in at number three, this right here, that rail system looks amazing. In theory, it was my dream. This is my dream studio, right? I got a rail system. I don't have, I keep the floors nice and clean. I don't have light stands everywhere that you can trip on, right? And I technically didn't pay for this. This was an exchange for a sponsor. So technically it's, you know, I did pay for it because I did promo for BNH, but I asked for the rail system in exchange instead of money. So this rail system has been the biggest pain in my ass ever since I got it. Because this is an old building. The ceilings are kind of, they're, on, they're not level. And even after leveling and it took a couple hours just to level it, at certain parts of the, on, that rail, on that rail system, th there's, there are certain parts where it just, it's not perfect and the modifier just starts to creep and just starts to move to the side. So I have to like find those sweet spots, you know, when, you know and, and I have to move the, the model, I have to move everything according to where it doesn't creep on the rails. So it has been, and right now it's like the worst. It's, it's, they just kind of just do their own thing. They have a mind of their own. That right there is, it looks freaking amazing, but I'm telling you, if you're, if you don't have like really like level ceilings, it's, it's, I, I wouldn't do it. In my opinion, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do this again. I just, I'll go with, I'll use proper, I'll use regular stands next time. Number four is a lens purchase that I did right before my Portugal trip that I took with Luminar a couple of months ago. I went out and I have a, a lot of different lenses. But I went out and I purchased the Tamron 20 to 40 f 2.8, and I got this for the A7R5 because I wanted a lens that can give me a good versatility, you know, for a wide angle range for photos, because I'm going to be doing a lot of landscapes. But also, I needed one for vlogging and for video creation as well. And I already had the 17 to 28. I have the 16 to 28 Sigma. I have the 21.8. You know, I have a lot of different options, but I wanted this one specifically because look at the size. It is much smaller than the, 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 the Sigma and the Tamron uh, 17 to 28. And so I'm like, okay, I think this would be the perfect option. And for photos, 
this is great. This is a great lens for photos. The problem is for video. So a lot of creators talked about this lens, like, yeah, this is, you know, this is a, it's a great video lens, but my issue is that for what I was doing and a lot of run and gun, like video making and documenting everything around me, all the sites, the problem is that when you racked zoom, so this is not a par focal lens and a lot of photography lenses are not par focal, which means that when you zoom, the focus is not maintained. So when you focus the, it, the subject or whatever you're focusing on, it's gonna get slightly blurry. Well, this is like, it's really bad. So if I'm racking zoom, if I'm walking or showing something and I rack zoom a little bit, everything just kind of blurs out of focus and it doesn't like regain it right away. You know what I'm saying? It'll stay on, it'll stay blurry. You have to half press the shutter. Whereas with some of my other lenses, like the Sigma, you know, it'll get slightly blurry, but then it'll kind of just grab focus again. And so I just found it to be really bad on this lens. So anyone out there that's looking for a, like a very versatile photo video lens that you want to vlog with, I would say this is not a good option if you plan on rack zooming at any point, because it just, it doesn't look good. So I probably won't be using this lens again. I might sell it or I might just leave it on a stationary camera that I'm not going to be uh, touching the zoom ring. You know what I'm saying? Next up is one of my absolute favorite lenses of all time. Actually, one of my favorite focal lengths of all time for portraits, the 135 f 1.8. This is, I would say, it's Sony's best G Master lens. This is an incredible lens when you want a unique looking image. The problem is with this lens, and this is the problem that I know a lot of people have, is that we buy gear based on what we want versus what we need. And this, this lens, I for the time that I've owned it, I've probably used it twice. Because when I'm shooting in the studio, why am I going to shoot it with, one with a 135, 1.8 when I can just use either, you know, my 85 millimeter where I'm, I'm somewhat close to the person. But if I need to back up, I'll just throw on the 70 to 200. I'm not shooting at F1.8 anyway. You know, it doesn't really make a difference in a studio. I'll just shoot a 70, 200. You know what I'm saying? And so this fits, it's that, that middle, that, that redheaded stepchild in the middle there that it's not getting a lot of love. And, you know, again, outdoors, this would be, this is my, this would be amazing. But outdoors, again, the working distance, it's kind of hard sometimes. Uh, yeah, so it's just, again, just, I, I love this lens and I wanna keep it in my, my stable of lenses, but I don't, I regret buying it because I have no use for it. I'm either using 85 or 70 to 200. So I do regret buying it. Another lens that I regret buying, and this sucker has been on my wish list for a very long time. This is the Helios. 85 1.5 and I've always wanted the silver one too. I think it looks really sexy on a black camera body. The issue with this lens, after doing a couple of shoots with it, it is one of the most pain in the ass experiences to use this lens because only the middle is sharp. So this is one of those swirly bokeh lenses where everything around the middle kind of swirls. It's a very unique and very, it's a very unique quality coming from this lens, the problem is, is because as an f1.5 aperture, 85 1.5, you know, it's really hard to get focus on it. And on top of that, you have to keep this, the framing, you have to keep the person in the middle because if they're not in the middle and you put them like toward the top of the frame, that's where it starts to get really distorted and really smudgy and blurry. And it's very limiting with compositions because you have to keep them in the middle. And it's not fun to use, it's not fun. It's just not. So I, I do regret buying it because this sucker is like $600. This is the DJI RS2 gimbal. It's a great gimbal. I didn't need it though. I already have all the gimbals here. I spent $1,000 on this gimbal for one reason. This is the Raveneye. This is like an HDMI transmitter so that I can transmit the footage to my phone here. But... At the same time, you can use it to like track things, right? So I've seen some cool videos on YouTube where presenters were using a Raven Eye system so that when they're moving around, the camera would track them as they move. And you can adjust, you know, how smooth and how fast you want it to track. I'm like, this will be perfect for the studio. So as I'm working here, doing my photography, I could have this thing on a, on a, on a stand just tracking me around everywhere. So that was why I, I spent a thousand dollars just for that. A couple of issues that I ran into. I shoot all my videos in S-Log3 and because 
the footage shows up as S log three on my cell phone, there's no contrast. So because it's working off this, it would constantly lose me because there's, it's just a flat image. There's no contrast. So that was one issue. So then I would turn off picture profile and I noticed that it worked much better with tracking me. The problem was that if I moved like past a light stand or crossed anything that was an obstruction, it would lose me right away. It would just start just going haywire or just stop going altogether, which would require me to walk over to the to the RS3, you know, RS2 gimbal, put a box around me again, make sure it's tracking me again. And I, I did that over and over and over. It just turned out to be a big headache. So this truly was a thousand dollars down the drain because again, I have multiple gimbals here. I don't think I've used this gimbal maybe a handful of times. I didn't need it at all. I purchased it just for the Raven Eye. And I believe DJI released a new version of the Raven Eye for the RS3. I, I, I think I saw some examples of it and I think that it's going to be much, it's a much better performer than the Raven Eye, but I'm too scared. Okay. I have a little trauma here about buying a gimbal specifically for that unit. So I'm not going to do that again. And now I want to share with you a purchase that you will absolutely not regret. That's starting up a website with Squarespace. If you have been looking to start a website, blog, or an online store, you need to check them out ASAP. Every entrepreneur needs a website, and with Squarespace, you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start. It's so easy to use. They have 24-7 customer support. If you ever get bored of the look, you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store like I did where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you want to check them out for yourself, use the coupon code MANNY and you'll get 10% off your first purchase.